This modern little table is a real blending of techniques and material. It's primarily machined with a CNC router using these Freud CNC router bits, but there's also some good old-fashioned woodworking, gluing up the solid hardwood tabletop and shaping it to size, for example. Hi, I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworkers Journal Magazine. I made this fun little piece and I learned a lot of things while I was doing that, so I'd like to share some of that with you. We get started by making the legs from half-inch Baltic birch plywood. There's 19 of these leg components, so let's get busy. With all of the machining efforts, you start at the center of the board that you're using. There are two basic leg components the upper and lower legs that make up this table. Both start out with a quarter inch spiral bit in the CNC machine, boring 3 8 diameter holes. Next, a 3 8 Freud straight bit is used to cut out the leg shapes. With each new operation, it's important to set the X, Y, and Z axes. Here, I'm zeroing out the Z axis. Each 24 by 24 inch panel will produce five leg components. Once the CNC process is done, as far as cutting, you still need to free the legs by cutting the tabs loose from the panel. Now, there are two different kinds of legs. One that goes to the floor, and the other one that supports the tabletop. They all have 3 8 inch through holes bored through them, with the exception of two for either end that have the boring only going halfway. Later, everything will be joined with a 3 8 inch dowel. Now, speaking of those 3 8 dowels, here's a trick I found out of necessity. Sometimes the dowels are actually a little oversized for what you need, and you need to sand them down. So what I did was chuck it into my 3 8 inch drill driver, and then just sand down the diameter along the whole piece. Then, test to see how it fits. I think I need to sand some more. Now speaking of sanding, you have to sand every woodworking project, even those made with the CNC router. Now I found in this project, because there's so many identical parts, you can clamp them together like this and sand them as a group and it saves a lot of time and keeps their uniformity. The other thing you should think about is if you're going to be painting it like we did, Leave them clamped up like this and paint the inside. It saves lots of time and drips. Don't ask me how I know that. One of the things I really like about this table is the geometric design that's etched into the top of the table. We uh, cut it with the CNC router and then filled it afterwards with uh, tinted epoxy. Now the CNC file for this design and for the legs and for everything are available as a free download on our website. So. Let's see this thing being engraved. Here we switch back to the quarter inch spiral bit again to engrave the pattern on the tabletop. Once again I marked the center of the board. Then I located the bit at the center point to start. We found by trial and error, for example what you're seeing here, that it would be better to have a finish on the surface of the tabletop and to use a very sharp bit that keeps tear out of the pattern to a minimum. Now anytime you use a CNC program for the first time, 
It's a great idea to test it from beginning to end on a scrap piece of lumber. Here's our test piece for the top, it's half inch plywood. We not only tested the CNC programming, but then we went ahead and tested our system for filling the openings with tinted epoxy. We learned a couple of things about the epoxy process. First, we learned that we needed to seal the inside of the surface grooves to keep the epoxy from bleeding into the wood fibers. Second, we used a fairly thin mirror coat epoxy colored with aniline dye. We chose the thinner formula because it will self-level. It also allows us to use a glue injector syringe for application. When you have the epoxy in place, you'll need to use a heat gun to pull out any bubbles. Once the epoxy is cured, which will take at least overnight, then use a card scraper or a sander to level it to the surface. Then a light sanding and spray a couple of coats or apply a couple of coats of final finish. In our case, we use an aerosol can of lacquer. Once the finish cures on the top, you can attach it to the legs with a few small screws and your table is done. This is a great little CNC project that really makes use of the capabilities of a home shop CNC and those special bits from Freud. I'm Rob Johnstone. Thanks for watching. Keep on making sawdust.